Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we've got another tablet to take a look at, this one from Lenovo. This is the Lenovo M9 tablet. It has a 9-inch display. It's relatively compact, as you can see here, and it's not all that expensive. This one is a nice alternative to some of the generic ones you might encounter, and it's backed up by a name brand. And we're going to take a closer look at this tablet in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Lenovo. We're going to do a giveaway on this one in a few weeks, and you can find out more about when that giveaway will take place on one of my three email lists. We have lon.tv slash email, which is my weekly newsletter. lon.tv slash digest is my daily one every time I upload a new video. And store alert is when I have announcements about upcoming gadget sales and giveaways. And any one of those three will get you the information as to when we are doing the giveaway. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. This is not a sponsored video, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little tablet is all about. Now, the price point on this one will vary based on where you're looking, but I found it for as little as $139 standalone at Best Buy. Amazon has a bundle that consists of the tablet and a stand for about $148, and this one came bundled with a clear case and stand, and this might be the one that Lenovo was selling direct a little while ago. Either way, don't expect to pay more than $150 for this one. Now, this has a 9-inch display. It runs at a resolution of 800 by 1340, so a little bit better than 720p. But on a small display like this, you do have more pixel density, so it doesn't look all that bad. There are, of course, higher resolution small tablets out there for more money, but I think the display here looks good for what you're going to pay for it. Inside, you've got a basic MediaTek Helio G80 processor. It's enough to do basic Android tasks without issue. We'll look at a few performance examples in a minute. It has three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. It does, though, have an SD card slot, so you can add a little more storage to the mix. Now, it weighs 0.75 pounds or 344 grams. It's actually very nicely built for a low-cost tablet. You get a nice glass front here on the display, a nice metal back here on the tablet. It feels pretty classy, and all in the industrial design here is pretty solid. For ports, you don't get much, but you do get more than you get on some tablets these days. So there is a headphone jack here, so you can plug in a headset and uh, do your calls or listen to some music. You have a USB Type-C port here. This is only, though, a USB 2.0 data speed port, so you're not going to get high-speed data transfers out of this, but you could plug in keyboards, mice, and other devices and have them work on this. This is also how you charge the tablet. It does not, though, support video output through that USB-C port, so you'll have to use a Chromecast or something for that. There are stereo speakers on here, one here on the bottom and the other here on the top. These, of course, work best when you are in landscape mode. The speakers actually surprise me. They don't sound all that bad, so you'll get decent audio quality just out of the speakers by themselves. But again, you've got the headphone jack, and of course, you can connect Bluetooth headphones to it as well. Here you've got your volume rocker and your power switch. It doesn't have a, a fingerprint reader, but it does have facial recognition, and when you lift the tablet up here and look at it, it will recognize your face and let you in without having to push any buttons. I know a lot of you will comment on the bezels here. They are a bit on the thicker side, but it does give a place for your thumb to rest so the screen doesn't get confused. I've noticed on a lot of these inexpensive Android tablets that if you have your thumb resting on the screen and try to scroll, things go south on you. Here, your thumb has a place to rest. So it does look a little dated perhaps, but I think there's some functional reason behind that. The cameras on this are not great. On the front here, you've got a 2 megapixel camera. It does okay for web conference calls. As you can see, the video quality is passable. It only shoots at 720p out of the front. The rear camera will shoot 8 megapixel photos. I guess good enough to send to somebody for a reference, but not for any kind of artistic endeavors. And the back camera here will shoot 1080p video at 30 frames per second. But again, not great video quality out of this and certainly no stabilizer. So let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll load up the Chrome browser here and jump over to the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, it does perform pretty well here for doing the basics like web browsing and email and some of the other basic tasks you might do on a tablet like this. One of the things that I like about these new Lenovo tablets is that they have a reading mode that actually looks pretty nice. 
So if you pull down your menu here, uh, you can go over to this option here called reading mode. And what I'm going to do is enable this and have it go to the grayscale effect. And what it does is it gives you a very nice black and white page here. It doesn't look quite as good as e-ink displays that you might see on a Kindle device, but the contrast is really good. It gets rid of a lot of the blue light here, and you get a, a look that looks a lot like a printed page that won't fatigue your eyes all that much. So if you're reading a book or maybe a very long article on a website, you can flip this mode on, turn it into this black and white mode, and get, I think, a very nice reading experience that's very easy to switch back off when you're done. So performance-wise, it's pretty good for the price point. Nothing spectacular, but I think the kinds of things that people do on a tablet like this will run very well on it. I also found it does very nicely with video, like YouTube and Netflix and others. The Wi-Fi here feels pretty responsive. It's not Wi-Fi 6, it is AC Wi-Fi, uh, but certainly that's adequate for what you're doing here. Additionally, let me stop the video here so I don't get this thing screwed up. It also does split screen. So if I select the app here and go split screen, I can add my web browser here on the other side and play back the video here on the left and then also browse my web page on the right. I can adjust things a little bit here as well. So a lot of the features you get on some of the larger tablets these days will also work on here. One other note is that it does support GPS. I ran one of those GPS tester apps to see if it could pick up any satellites, and it does. And this is not the cellular version of the product either. So if you've got some application that relies on GPS working without an internet connection, this looks like it can handle that, which might make it a fun tool for amateur radio operators out there who need GPS for some of their remote applications. Now, gaming on this feels pretty good. This game is Horizon Chase. that runs at a pretty decent clip here. And most of the other casual kinds of Android games that you run into on the Google Play Store should perform about where this one does. Some of the more demanding ones, like Call of Duty Mobile, will run just fine, but you won't get the level of graphical fidelity you'll have on a flagship smartphone, but still all very playable here. Now, if you've got kids who play Minecraft and Roblox, I found Minecraft worked okay on here. Roblox, though, is a little iffier, as you can see. It does get a little bit laggy here, more than I'm comfortable recommending. So this is probably not a good Roblox device, but just about everything else should be pretty usable and playable on this little tablet. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark Test, we got a score of 705. And although this puts this device at the bottom of the list for things that we've looked at recently, it's about where I expected it would come in at. One thing I want to note, though, especially if you've got kids that are playing Roblox, is to check out the 11-inch tablets from Amazon and Walmart. Those cost a little bit more than this one does, but they perform much better for games like Roblox, and that one might be the better choice for a kid who's playing some of those types of games on the device. This, though, is certainly more compact and better suited for some of the basic Android apps that most people run on a tablet like this one. Let's take a look now at game streaming. So this is the Xbox Cloud Gaming feature that's part of Game Pass Ultimate. And as you can see here, it looks and plays pretty great here. So I don't think you're going to have any trouble streaming games either from a computer on your home network or from one of these game streaming services. All looks pretty good here. Now, I know a lot of you are curious about the long-term support for a tablet like this. And I know many of you have probably bought tablets from name brands only to see it never get updated. Lenovo's got a page on their support website that details what they plan to do with this tablet and all the other ones they manufacture. And right now, according to the table, this one is running Android 12, which I can confirm that it is, but it will get an Android 13 update by the third quarter of 2023, and it will receive security updates for just about three years until April 30th, 2026. After that April 30th date, the tablet will still work, but it's not going to get any other updates. So this is very similar to how Chromebooks work, but of course Chromebooks have many more years of support than what you're going to get on one of these tablets. But it's good to see that this is getting spelled out now so consumers know what to expect and how long a particular tablet will be supported for. Now, as far as battery life on this one, it is very good. You'll certainly get, I think, 10 to 12 hours out of it easily doing the basic tasks that it's designed to do. And I think you could probably squeeze a little bit more out of it if you keep the brightness down on the display. And altogether, it feels like a pretty nice little tablet here for the price, especially if you're looking for something compact 
and from a name brand. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.